Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. I got an email the other day from a member of our community, and he asked me a pretty interesting question. He owns a couple of rental properties, and he's looking to buy his next property. And he wasn't sure if it might make sense to diversify a little bit, to maybe buy a property in a different city, or maybe even diversify locally, maybe buy in a different neighborhood or even a different type of property, or if he should just stick with what he's doing now because it's it's working for him. And I thought that might be an interesting thing to explore on the podcast today. So what I've got for you is three different guests, and we're going to figure out, do they have any diversification in their portfolio, or have they just figured out something that's worked for them and they've just kept on doing it over and over and over again. So let's take a real quick break. We'll thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll meet our first guest. The first step in buying a rental property is to get pre-qualified. And I would suggest you work with a lender that specializes in working with investors because the last thing you want to have happen is to get to closing and find out the money's not there and you can't close. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender, and she'll pre-qualify you for free if you mention Rental Income Podcast. Find out more today. Contact Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. First up today is Corey Binsfield from Duluth, Minnesota. So, Corey, what do you think? Do you think it's a good idea for investors to diversify their rental portfolio? Um, definitely. I think you got to have different unit types. I mean, there's various forms of diversification. You could be like, oh, I'm commercial versus apartments or storage units. And then there's diversification across geography and regions. But I know for me, because I like to have all my rentals clumped together in a specific specific area just to make my life simple. Um, I just say, okay, I want some duplexes, some four units, some triplexes, and then smaller multifamilies like five to you know thirteen unit properties. So all your rentals are right there where you live in the same area. Yeah, it's really nice. Like I can, like my office is only like I don't know three miles away. And then to get to any rental takes me less than five minutes. Okay. Now, so does it concern you that if something happened to your local economy, you know, maybe a big employer left or um, something bad happened that that could really mess you up? Definitely. If I was in a, like a, a one employer town or let's say, you know, I was in the military. So the military base is a primary employer and then they shut down that base right. i'd be like really worried but up in this economy we've got um basically two major hospitals they're investing another billion dollars and them right now we got three universities we're the largest employer of government people within the uh the county and probably the third largest in the state of minnesota so i think i think we got our bases covered okay in terms of various yep. industries that makes sense. All right. So your city is diversified. So that that kind of makes you diversified just because you're operating in that area. Now, you, yes. you mentioned you have different types of properties. Do they attract different types of tenants? Like, are you diversified in your tenant type or maybe the industries that they work in? Yeah, I've noticed that I've got like, I'd say about 30 to 40% of my portfolio is college students. And um, I actually love college students because they're extremely resilient in terms of their incomes. If they can't pay the rent, you can, you know, I have the parents co-sign on the lease. And so that gives me an extra layer of protection in terms of no rent. And then I've got what I call the working class people, people just coming out of college, uh, like young professionals. And they don't want to buy a house yet as they figure out their career. And so those people um, tend to be really solid for me. Although I do get a little more turnover on that one just because, you know, they switch jobs Mm -hmm. or they move to a different area. And then the last one is what I call the middle class professional. 
they they could be either in between buying a house or they're simply just choosing the rent because they don't want to deal with home ownership. And those tend to be like my more high end rentals. You know, so it, it sounds like another way that you're diversified is in the number of doors that you have. That if you only had one or two rentals, y- you could be in trouble very easily if someone w- were to just move out. But with the number of doors you have, I, I feel like that also gives you a level of diversification too. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I can get, I'll have like certain tenants, they'll be in a one bedroom and then, you know, they get in a relationship and all of a sudden they want more space. So they're like, Hey, Corey, do you have any two bedrooms? I'm like, Oh yeah, I've got this two bedroom over here. That's so awesome. then I just yeah. transfer them over to another unit. Now you have survived a couple of recessions and right now you're surviving a, a pandemic has, have you ever had a, a time where things have been tough or maybe things have been tight or you've had more vacancy or turnover or has your diversification kind of saved you? Um, let me answer that in two ways. Number one, in terms of the first part, when was the worst period ever? It was kind of odd, but leading into the great recession, if you could fog a mirror, they'd loan you money. Right. And so that was actually kind of a challenge trying to attract renters because everyone was buying a house. And then the second part, of course, was during that downturn, it was like, it was just ugly. Because then it wasn't like now where they're offering, like, you know, like forbearance um, mortgages and massive unemployment checks, you know, where you get an extra $600 a week. So that period was just, it was ugly. Now, the good part about it was, Because of my investment advisory business, you know, the stock market had plunged and my revenue is down probably 50 or 60 percent. But my rentals actually saved me and I was able to stay in business and basically keep the lights on. Corey has been on the podcast several times. If you want to hear more interviews with him or you want to look up his blog or reach out to him, I've got all that on the website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 292. Next up is Joel Miller from Erie, Pennsylvania. So Joel, all your rentals are in Erie, Pennsylvania. Do you feel like you're diversified? Well, I think that it's diversified and not diversified at the same time, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. First of all, it's it's, uh, not diversified in the sense that I strictly invest in residential rental property and not in commercial property, for example. And uh, uh, yet uh, there is some diversity in the type of uh, residential rental properties that we have. We have both single-family homes as well as, uh, uh, you know, apartment complex type things where you've got, you know, uh, multiple units around a parking lot and its own off-street parking, in other words, and and, and so on. Um So uh, there is some diversity there also in the type of property or the grade, shall we say, if you're familiar with A, B, C, D properties. uh, We have uh, the properties diversified uh, between mostly um, Cs and Bs. I can't say I have an A property, and I can't say I – I'm I'm not sure. I might have a D property (laughs) or or a few, but uh, um, – so there are uh, some diversity diversities uh, in that sense. Yes. Has there ever been a time where maybe your C properties weren't doing well and you were thinking, gosh, I'm really glad I have these B properties or have the whole time that you've been investing have, has it never really helped you being diversified with B properties and C properties? Well, you know, there have been, and keep in mind, I've been doing this for 42 years. Um, uh, there have been times where uh, neighborhoods that uh, we've held property in uh, went through maybe some some uh, difficult times that needed some adjustment that could have seemed seemed like uh, like geez, this is not uh, that great of an idea, but. Ultimately, uh, we've been able to adapt to um, uh, the market uh, that that is uh, available to us in those different neighborhoods, 
and uh, uh, been able to uh, make all the pro- all the properties profitable. You know, over the time, um, I don't think any pro- any of our properties ever had a non profitable year ever uh, in the the, uh, the forty two years since I bought the first one, which I still have, and. Um, which in itself has uh, is a good example of uh, a property that kind of um, moved maybe down one uh, grade over over time. Have you ever thought about about diversifying to a different geography? Um, actually, I have not thought about that mainly because uh, I manage all the properties uh, myself and. Uh, uh, was able to find enough uh, 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 property to keep keep me busy and profitable with the the uh, you know money that I had available for uh, uh, investments you know all, all within the uh, the city of Erie. Does or, that you know the surrounding area? Does that ever bother you that if if you're if Erie ha- ever had any kind of um, a, a really bad recession or something happened to your economy that was devastating that that could bring you down. Like I know that hasn't happened in 42 years, but if that ever did, like, d- does that keep you up at night? Well, uh, it's, it's a, a, certainly a consideration for anybody who sets out to, to do that. They have to ask themselves, you know, whether, that would be a consideration in their market. But um, Erie, we kind of have this thing where we are never really affected dramatically one way or the other by the nation's economy uh, in the sense that we don't have things building up to a bubble that bursts and nor do we experience the depths of recessions and so on. And the local economy is um, – uh, diverse enough and strong enough that uh, uh, even as large companies have come and gone over time, like for example, our largest employer used to be General Electric, and uh, it's uh, basically gone now. It's only, you know the division that's left here was own it was bought by uh, another company a few years ago, and with only a fraction of the employees of GE at the at the their height. And um, uh, and yet, other companies have uh, have risen to to become the largest employer, and uh, uh, so we just kind of chug along, and uh, nothing really dramatic ever happens here. That's from, great from an economic standpoint. So, to answer your question, no, uh, only because of where we're at, I don't worry about that. But I can totally see from uh, what I've uh, you know, become aware of in other markets around the country that that's a big consideration. Sure, sure. Well, now, what about other types of investments? So do you only invest in rental properties or do you have other real estate or non-real estate investments? Well, over time, uh, we have diversified a little bit there as well. Um, initially, in addition to accumulating uh this, you know, residential rentals, uh, smaller ones that that uh, uh, came along in the beginning years. I was also taking extra money and investing in mutual funds. I've never been one to invest in individual stocks and, and try to play the stock market that way. Uh, as far as uh, uh, picking certain companies to invest in or picking the timing to invest in the stock market in general, um, I just would routinely. Uh, uh, take uh, money to put into mutual funds, and I used to get a lot of newsletters to try to educate myself on on what mutual funds to invest in. I wouldn't have a whole slew of them, maybe half a dozen of them, and those did very well over time. I would make adjustments in in them over time, but now in recent years, we've um, gotten into another aspect of real estate, uh, which is hard money lending or private money lending, where now I'm lending money to younger guys. Uh, who are uh, borrowing to either uh, typically what we lend on is flipping houses or uh, 
to stabilize a rental property that they want to have as a keeper property where they would need to do some rehab. And then uh, they they pay us off by refinancing the uh, property to, with permanent financing, and then they hold on to the property. If you're in Erie, Pennsylvania, and you're flipping houses, and you want to connect with Joel to see if he can maybe fund some of your deals, I've got his contact information. Or if you want to check out his prior interview on the podcast, I've got a link to that too. You can find it all at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 292. Next up is Anton Ivanov from San Diego. So Anton, what do you think? Do you think it's important for investors to diversify their rentals? So Dan, uh, my, my thoughts on this is I think real estate is uh, a little bit different than the equity markets, you know, where the, kind of the concept of diversification uh, you know, exists fairly strongly, and a lot of folks may be familiar with it. Uh, you know, in equities, it's typically very easy to diversify a portfolio. I can go and buy, you know, a few four or five index funds that will give me exposure to stocks and bonds domestically, internationally, across different asset classes and company sizes and industries. With real estate, uh, in my experience, it is much more difficult, uh, you know, especially if you're going the more traditional route of, you know, buying undervalued rental properties, rehabbing them, managing them yourself. It is it, it takes a lot of effort to, uh, you know, establish a team, uh, you know, find those agents, find property managers, uh, find your wholesalers or brokers who help you with lead generation. Uh, so, it, you know, it takes quite a bit of time to do that in a specific area. Um, and on top of this, uh, I think the most successful real estate investors, um, and this is speaking from my personal experience and knowing other successful real estate investors, is they're extremely familiar with a specific geographical area. Uh, you know, it's obviously their city, their state, but sometimes it's, it's down to individual neighborhoods where they're very... Uh, in tune with what's going on, they're able to identify trends, uh, you know, if neighborhoods getting, uh, you know, up and coming areas where they can buy property cheap, that they will see significant rent and price appreciation in the future. So it, it, it takes quite a bit of time to kind of get established in a certain area, uh, start buying rental properties, um, and, you know, doing so across the state or across different cities or across the whole country takes tremendous amount of effort. And I'm not so sure that it's actually needed uh, in real estate specifically, because uh, as we've seen in, uh, you know, the last crash in 08, 09, I feel that the real estate market across the U.S. is fairly tightly correlated. You know, there's different, there's cyclical markets, there are linear markets. So there's different performance across uh, you know, kind of different areas. But if we're talking about diversification, uh, you know, traditionally it's done for the purpose of risk mitigation, uh, meaning that if a, you know, you have some sort of catastrophic crash or decline in one asset class, uh, hopefully you have some other assets that are not declining at the same time. Well, w we've witnessed with real estate many times where if there is a kind of a global or, or a national crash, it's most likely going to affect uh, real estate prices and even rents in many different markets, probably all of them. So you're not getting much value out of just spreading your portfolio out across uh, different geographical areas for the sake of risk mitigation. However, I think you're adding a lot of complexity and, and even time to, to be able to invest in different cities and be successful as opposed to just concentrating your efforts, your time, you know, knowledge, education in one specific area, uh, probably, you know, where you live because you, you, you can drive around, you can meet with people. Um, so I would say that, uh, you know, kind of from a more traditional sense, I don't believe that uh, a real estate investor, a rental property investor should necessarily worry about uh, diversification. Um, you know, the only, and, and I myself own property in four states. And, and actually, uh, the reason that came about was because, uh, the markets that I originally invested in and where I live, I live in San Diego, Southern California. Uh, they're not very good, uh, for kind of long term cash flow, uh, and, and uh, kind of easy entry point markets. 
right? So if you find yourself in a situation where the area you live in is very expensive, the, the cash flow is limited, that would be a time where I would say, hey, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you still can buy a few properties locally, understand the process, but then, uh, you know, move to other out of state markets primarily for the purpose of finding better investment opportunities there and not so much just because you want to diversify, if that makes sense. Yeah. So why did you, I mean, so obviously you live in San Diego and it didn't make right. sense to continue to build out your portfolio. But why did you buy in three other markets and not just one market? Um, sure. So the, um, you know, the way it worked for us uh, is when we first started investing out of state, my wife and I, um, we kind of, we had limited uh, knowledge, at, at least compared to where we are now, um, about identifying good markets, buying property. So we actually went the turnkey route and the first few out of state properties we bought in Atlanta and Birmingham were turnkey properties. Uh, so we did market research. We, we thought those were, uh, kind of, you know, good areas to invest and they turn out to be great. Uh, obviously these were turnkeys, so we didn't have to worry a lot about building our local team. Um, you know, following that, uh, we kind of had a, a year or two period where, uh, we were just saving up enough money to buy additional properties. Um, and during that time, I really dug deep into, uh, you know, market analysis, trying to understand which areas, uh, I feel would be the best for long term rentals because we wanted to actually, at that point, you're right. We, we had, you know, three, uh, three different markets we were in and I just wanted to hone in on one area because that's when I started to realize that, hey, it's better to just, get really familiar, um, really entrenched, so to speak, with one market. I actually uh, ended up focusing on Kansas City, Missouri. So that was our fourth market. Uh, and, and that's where we still invest today. And that really came about because of the market research. So I just felt that at the time when we were buying, this was a few years ago, uh, Kansas City as a market presented better opportunities than Atlanta or Birmingham or uh, definitely San Diego. Um, so it just turned out that I picked, you know, that fourth city and, and actually the bulk of our portfolio since then was purchased there. Um, so I think there's nothing wrong, you know, if, um, for example, you start investing in a city uh, in, in a certain area, uh, you get in at a good time. But obviously, uh, we see different kind of uh, things happen in certain areas. Some areas become overpriced very quickly. Uh, so it becomes, you know, not, not, it, it may not make much sense to, to find deals there. Maybe you can't find good deals there. Um, and that's exactly what basically happened to us. We just decided that, Hey, at this time, uh, we will move on to a different market for better investment opportunities. Uh, it wasn't so much for the diversification reason, but just because we, we thought we could do better in the different market. And, you know, five, 10 years from now, it is possible that. Uh, Kansas City will not be kind of the best place where we feel uh, it's good to invest. And at that point, uh, we will probably consider looking at a different market and following the same process and build our team there and, and learn the area. But, uh, you know, all of that takes time. So you, um, you know, kind of looking back, if I had to give advice to certain investors, I would definitely encourage them to, you know, focus on an area that you like on macroeconomics uh uh, you know, kind of scale. You you like the what's going on in that area in general. You like the the property prices. Work on building the team there. Really learn the area and basically maximize your investment potential. Uh, you know, and after a few years, if things start to shift, if that area maybe sees a lot of investor activity that drive up the prices, uh, you're having a much harder time finding deals. Uh, that would be a good time to look at some other places. Um, uh, you know, and maybe start. Uh, doing the same thing you did there over a few years in a different market. I think that was interesting. All three of our guests basically said the same thing, that they don't think it's important to diversify into a different market. It's more important to diversify with the types of rentals you have. And the one thing that they also all have in common is that they all have a lot of rental units. And I think that is a key to diversifying your portfolio is to have a lot of different streams of income so that if one or two of them dry up, it's not that big of a deal. You've got other tenants that are paying you rent. 
If anybody wants to hear more from Anton, he's been on the podcast a couple of times. Uh, the last time was just a few weeks ago, but I've got links to his prior appearances on the website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 292. Anton also has an app called Deal Check where you can analyze rental properties. If you uh, want to check that out, he's got a special discount for our listeners. I've got a link to that at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 292. I'd like to thank our sponsor today for making this episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. If our landlords inspired you today and you're ready to buy a rental property or you want to add to your portfolio, the lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge. She's a nationwide lender and she specializes in helping investors buy rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or set up a time to talk to Chaley, just go to ridgelendinggroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, lendinggroup.com. If you mention Rental Income Podcast, she will waive all the pre-qualification fees. NMLS 42056. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. Make sure you subscribe. We have new interviews every single Tuesday. And if you subscribe, you'll get notified as soon as they come out. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.